Yo! When did everyone just decide to get Twitter? Professor Aizawa told us we need it in case any pro heroes update us on more internships. Just think! All Might could ask me to work with him! On Twitter! I agree with that, Small Might. Although, I enjoy looking at my father's stupid Twitter posts. Sarah showed me a hilarious rock meme on it, and I figured I needed this to find more. I am simply using Twitter as a means to reach out to those in need of extra help for the upcoming hero exams. That is what it is used for, correct? Okay, Adingenium, whatever you say. I got it so I could start talking to some more people outside of class, but now that everyone has it, I might as well just stick to my original family. -am. It is the truth. I care about the minds of students like us, and find it only appropriate to help those in need. When at Ingenium is using Twitter to find hot girls, the tutor. At Flex Tape, Ida's mind has been corrupted by the power of love. It is only necessary we sacrifice his heart to the Lord of Shadows for mercy upon us all. At Eternal Darkness. Wow, I didn't know you can follow cults on Twitter. At Charge Chew. Would you like me to send you some of my favorite accounts to follow? Call me, I swear to God. Your mind better not be corrupted by the end of today. At Eternal Darkness. Momo might spank me, so I'm going to have to say no. Send me them later. Wink. I can't have my Pikachu turning to the dark side. That doesn't mean to stop hanging out with Tokiyami, though. At Mama Momo. You act like there's also a light side. Only dark prevails. Shut the hell up, Birdbrain! Don't act like you're so tough and cool because you have... something... hard carrying you. Wow. Even the block of C4 has Twitter. What would you use it for, though? What do you think, dumbass? All the pro heroes have Twitter. Might as well get with it early for when I become the best hero ever. At King Explosion Murder, you do realize you're eating your jacket, right? People are gonna think that's your quirk. At King Explosion Murder really said om nom nom noises. Ah, oh, fuck off, extras! As of late, I have assigned and allowed the use of Twitter for all 1A students. Please do not let me regret this. Come on, Shota! Let them be kids and have fun! They've only got two months of school left anyways! At Eraserhead, don't worry, sir. We'll all be very student-like and respectable of each other. I will make sure that nothing too intense happens. Me and Ida will be on the lookout. At Mama Momo, who in their right mind would make Twitter a hassle? I can only imagine. Luckily, we can already pinpoint some of the potential hornet's nests. I've got four in mind. Of course 1A would cast shame upon an already perfect school. At Eraserhead, I think you should just take away the privilege now. Five now. Oi! You fucking talking about me, headphones? I ain't no damn hornet's nest! And now there's six. Crazy the problems you can so easily forget about. At King Explosion Murder? Dude, there's no way she's talking about the Baku Squad. We're the most respectful people in the system. At Flex Tape. Imagine the audacity of people not willing to have respect. Gotta show trust every day, all day. At Flex Tape at Charge Chew. Question. How high are you two currently? At Frosty Flames. It's only Cerro, bro. I swear. At Frost Flames, I feel like the Empire State Bill- Cammy, what the fuck?! And so begins the swarm of hornets. Kami rolled out of his bed, sluggish from yesterday's intense workout with Bakugo and Sero. He was still surprised Bakugo agreed to train with them. Either something was up with him, or he genuinely liked them. Probably option one. But Kami was still optimistic. Denki slowly walked towards the kitchen to grab some cereal when Shoto, his dorm mate, walked in to join him. He looked exhausted, more than usual which was a little concerning for Kaminari. Rough night? Kami asked. He gave Shoto a slight grin <laughs> as to imply something else and Sho returned it, receiving Denki's dirty message. You could say that, Shoto replied. His back was killing him from his stupid quirk. <sighs> He found himself freezing his bed in the middle of the night and waking up to sleeping on thick ice. Shoto had no idea why, but figured it would go away soon. Kami hopped up ha! on the counter, filling his mouth with oh, spoonfuls of Cheerios. Need someone to cuddle with? He said, giving Shoto a wink. Todoroki just chuckled and smacked <laughs> Kami's leg, hearing out aloud, Hey! 
You come in my bed, and I'll roast your sparky ass. Shoto answered back. He kept his grin as he walked to the dining table, cold soba in hand. That stuff kills you? I'm going to laugh at your soba-filled corpse. Denki said as he joined Todoroki. Todoroki continued slurping his soba away, listening to his doormate rant about his workout last night. He loved Kami. Not in a gay way, of course, but in a way that if someone were to hurt Kaminari, Shoto would break every bone in the attacker's body. The way Kami was just able to bubble up and make a dense room feel light and comforting gave Todoroki a smile. Denki may be an idiot, but he was the only idiot he wanted as one of his best friends. A knocking at the door interrupted Kami's conversation to himself. He walked towards it and opened the door. Standing there was Hitoshi Shinzo, his lavender hair in a ponytail hanging over one shoulder. Kami's chest tensed a little bit before calming down. Shinzo? How may I help you? It's only 7 o'clock. Kami said in a low, stern voice. <laughs> Good morning to you too. Shinzo said with a coy grin. And I was just coming to talk to Todoroki about yesterday's lesson. Kami stepped away from the door to let the purple boy in. While the two of them chatted, Kaminari quickly got dressed and ready for class. He remembered his textbooks for the first time since the beginning of the year, and packed a snack just in case. He felt so much more focused on what he was doing that sparks began to snap from his fingers. He took a couple minutes to calm down his heart before walking out the door of his dorm, giving Shoto a peace sign before leaving. He knew class was only in an hour, but he needed some sort of distraction. He walked down the hall to Kirishima's room. There, he would forget about everything. All in favor of joining Bakugo in Kirishima's dorm, say C4. Charge Chu, no fucking way. I already have one annoying motherfucker. I don't need double the brain dead. At King Explosion Murder. Um, ouch for one? And two, if Kami wants to stay in our room, I'm totally down. More bro time. At Red Riot. I love you, bro! At Charge Chu at Red Riot. Why is Kami betraying me? At Frosty Flames. Dude! Cat makes the best omelet ever. At Charge Chu. You're leaving me. For a dead baby chicken? At Frosty Flames. It do be like that sometimes, hun. Imagine ditching Resident Pretty Boy for a dead chick. <laughs> At Blank Tape, I'd leave anybody for a dick, dead or alive. Someone let me kill him. It'll be quiet. At Earphone Jack, I'm not saying yes, but I'm also not saying no. Who's coming with? At Earphone Jack. Damn, on my way! Let me fucking blow him up! At Earphone Jack. I'm coming to restrain, Cat. Do whatever you want with soon-to-be grape juice. Meet y'all there. God damn it. Wow! It's been one day, and there's already someone taped their chalkboard. Anyone want to explain? At Loudmouth, with all due respect, Mineta's a perv. Agreed. Why he's still here is beyond my knowledge. At Loudmouth. Have you seen the way he acts sometimes? So unmanly. His dark thoughts have consumed his soul. The boy once known as Mineta is long gone. The best part was that he tried to make decoys of himself by taking pillows, putting a t-shirt on him, and sticking his grapes on the top. That's called strats. I would've thought that! At Great Ball, five, six, seven, eight, the Senate just decided your fate. <laughs> Man, if I ever have to look after Mineta, you're coming with me. At Earphone Jack. Ooh, is that a date I hear? At Earphone Jack. Yes, please! We need a 1A relationship. The only one that's with somebody is Nito of all people. At Pinky at Invisibabe. Ladies, ladies, let's calm down. Me and Kyo are friends. Best friends. No point in starting rumors over nothing, Kay. And besides, if you two want a 1A relationship so bad, why not ask for At charge two. Denki! At charge two. Shut the fuck up! Did I miss something? I had a red riot. 
Don't worry about it, Kiri. You know those three always gossip about something. Cut Red Riot. All you need to know is I'ma buy a muzzle for your lightning bolt. At Pinky, what are you talking? Oh. At charge at you, run! Somebody call Ida! This man's gotta get out fast! Hey, are you okay? Um, I think so. Why wouldn't I be? You didn't respond to Mina's tweet. She hit a nerve. No, of course not. Jiro, you can tell me anything. Absolutely anything. I... Um... Okay, so here's the thing. I like Kami. A lot. He's funny, he's sweet, and yeah, he may be an idiot, but that's what makes him amazing. I can't stop thinking about how much I want him to hold my hands, my hips, fuck. I want him so bad, but you know me. It's not like I actually have the guts to say anything. So I'm stuck at this point. Oh honey, why didn't you say anything sooner? I can't express fucking emotions, okay? How long have you liked him? Since the entrance exams. I think you should tell him. How about no? How about yes? It's not healthy if you just let this eat at you, and exams are in two months. How are you going to focus for those? I don't know. Just let me think about it. He might not even like me back. Mm hmm. What's that supposed to mean? Nothing at all. Momo! You see the way he looks at you, right? Mm. The glimmer in his eye that passes through and would be impossible to notice if you didn't care? He doesn't have an eye glimmer. It's when he walks away from talking to me, his hands start sparkling static electricity from excitement. Fuck. He likes me back. Is that a bad thing? No! God, I might be as stupid as him sometimes. How did I not notice? A young love. By the way, how's Todoroki? Hmm. Hey! Does anyone want to help me bake a cake today? I'm so bored. At Sweet Cakes. Hell yes. I'll consider today as my tea day. At Pinky. You ate an entire fucking bag of gummy bears last night. At King Explosion Murder. I was stress eating, okay? I haven't even started studying for exams yet. At Sweet Cakes. I'll join you, bro. Can we make cinnamon rolls too? Of course. I don't know how Zuku will feel about the competition, though. <laughs> I am the one and only Cinnamon Roll. Nothing can take that title away from me. That's Small Might. I don't know. Some of the boys do be looking like a snack. Just saying. At Invisibabe. And the odds of you ending up with one are... what? A King Explosion Murder. Hey now, no need to be an asshole. Toro's right though. True. At Sweet Cakes. You best believe I'm making a cake with you. Sarah's tagging along as well. He's too high to respond, though. I might as well join. Not like Professor Aizawa actually gave us any work to do. At Earphone Jack. He was in a sleeping bag all class, to be fair. But this will be a nice stress reliever, so I too will join. At Sweet Cakes. You can use me as an oven just in case. At Frosty Flames. Shoto dear. Uh, the last time we tried that, the dorms almost burnt down. <sighs> Not to mention, Aizawa gave the entire class detention for a week. At Invisibabe. There was a perfect explanation for that. Nonetheless, I'm still joining. If something burns down, don't fucking call me. I'm busy studying. At King Explosion Murder, you just keep eating your jacket. Tell me how that tastes while we be munching on some cake. It's been about an hour, and so far nothing looks like a pile of ash. At Pinky, 
We've got a pro baker in the kitchen, and you still have no faith in us. I'm glad everyone's having fun. The cake looks really good. We'll put icing on them once they cool down. I charged you. Dinky, you almost shocked everyone because you forgot to put gloves on when taking the cakes out. At Pinky. Shut up! I didn't think it would be that hot! My hands really hurt now. I'll grab you a bucket of ice and some water. At Earphone Jack. Thank you, Kyo! At least someone cares about me! At Sweet Cakes, please help! I can't roll the cinnamon rolls up properly! On my way! Has anyone seen Shoto? I haven't seen him after his left side blazed up. He went to his room to grab another shirt. He'll be back in five. Does anyone know why that happened? He was just making the batter. I've got my suspicions. At Pinky, get off your phone and come help me! At Red Riot. On my way, Rocky. Phew. Danky, I need help. Everything okay? I burnt my hand, so I can't text super fast, just so you know. How do you tell someone how you feel? Ooh, I see. You were checking out Momo, weren't ya? It's not my fault. She just started smiling and my whole body heated up. Have you checked Twitter? She seems worried about you, bro. I think she likes you. Yao Yorizu has standards. I definitely do not meet those. Dude, she told me she likes you. Didn't think Resident Pretty Boy would get all worked up over class mom. She likes me? You're lying. She told me in January after our midterms. Why do you think she only got a 98? She couldn't stop looking at you during the test. Okay, I need to breathe. Maybe I shouldn't come back. I'll set the dorms on fire if I do. Get your ass over here now. I'll make something work, but in the meantime, wait outside Sato's dorm. And if I don't see a red heart next to your Twitter profile by the end of today, I'll crawl into your bed and shock the shit out of you. This is why I have a rubber blanket. I'll take that as a thank you. Kami reread the messages, chuckling to himself. Resident Pretty Boy, you are a handful. He whispered. Put your phone down! Jiro called from the counter. She sped walked behind Kami before grabbing his hands and placing them in the ice bucket. The cold felt amazing on Denki's hands, but Jiro gave a small yelp as soon as her skin hit the ice. Uh! Denki giggled a little <laughs> bit at that, but Jiro didn't care. The pain was worth it. If you want these burns to heal, then you need to keep your hands in the bucket! Jiro scolded. She completely forgot the position she was in when she saw Kami look at her with that goofy, lovable smirk. Jiro was holding Kaminari from behind, their fingers laced into each other's. Kami lowered his hands into the ice, giving Jiro a reason to move closer to the heat of his back and make it harder for her to pull away from the weight of the ice. Yes, ma'am, Denki said, giving her a wink. I don't see you moving your hands, though. Is the ice really not that cold? I'm simply making sure you don't try and text whoever you were texting. Jiro replied in a huff. She didn't want to blow her cover, and at the same time, she didn't want to let go. Who were you texting? Kami's phone buzzed, and he turned his head to read the message. Here. Was all it read. Kami searched for Yayorozu and saw her making cupcakes with Sato. He figured Sero left to use the bathroom and smoke another blunt. Momo! Denki yelled across the room. Can you make sure Sero isn't dead in the bathroom? Oh my, yes, I'll go check. She said, obviously annoyed. Sato's dorm was the only one not to have a bathroom inside it. Instead, there was one just outside the hall, where Momo began pacing towards. Operation Toto Momo is a go. Denki chuckled. <laughs> Jiro had put all the pieces together and began laughing at Kami, <laughs> pressing in close to his back. At this point, her head was resting on his shoulder. He tilted his head to the side, 
and gently placed his head on hers. Jiro looked the other way at Mina, who had made a quick heart shake with her hands at them, to hide the blush spread across her face. Denki may not have noticed, but Jiro was in heaven. Yao Rozu stomped out the door and made her way to the men's bathrooms. She knew Sero had a good heart, but this was a problem, especially for the people having to take care of his problem. He wouldn't ever admit it, but Sero was an addict. He needed help, maybe even counseling to get over this addiction. Instead, he just insisted that one day he would stop using it. Momo was outside the men's bathroom, banging aggressively on the door. Sero! I swear to God, if you're high, I'm going to come in there and kick your ass myself! Momo yelled. The door creaked open slightly. Yayurozu expected to see another baked roll of toilet paper, only to her surprise to see Shoto Todoroki standing in front of her. His face was flushed, no, puffy, almost as if he had been crying. His eyes grew wide as he stared at Momo, her hands covering her mouth. She had never seen him so upset, so distraught in her life. He was the type to suppress his emotions with a beautiful blank face. And yet, here he was standing, looking as if the world was about to end. Sorry. Sarah's in the furthest left stall. He's not high. Todoroki said in a hushed whisper. He went to walk past Yaoyorozu until she pushed him against the wall, her hands placed just below his upper chest, her face tomato red, staring into his heterochromatic eyes. Something's wrong, Shoto. I've never seen you like this before, Momo asked. Her voice was trembling, and her hands sank deeper into his chest. She just wanted to embrace him, hold him until his scar healed permanently, or at least until the shade of red left his face. I... Uh... Shoto stammered. He didn't know what to say. The words that attempted the way out of his mouth were being sent back down his throat. Todoroki had rehearsed his lines in front of Sato's room, then he broke down. The fear inside Shoto grew and overwhelmed his civil, collected self and forced him to go to the bathroom and think of the problem he had been from the very beginning. He wasn't good enough for his mother. He wasn't good enough for his father. What made him think that he would be enough for someone as perfect as Yao Yorozu? He looked up at the ceiling for a couple of seconds thinking of something, anything, to get out of this awkward standoff. He knew saying it was nothing would only arise more questions. Then, he remembered what Sero told him, as the completely sober boy watched him cry over the sink. Start it off with something light, make her laugh, then you tell her. Shoto took a deep breath, <sighs> swallowing all his self-doubt in one gulp. He looked into Yaoyorozu's eyes, placing his hands around her waist. Maybe he was going too fast, but Momo moved closer, the blush becoming increasingly obvious. Shoto gave her a smile before beginning his confession. Do you remember the last time we tried baking? Todoroki asked. Momo looked at him with a little bit of confusion in her face, but answered honestly. <laughs> of course, we were making a cake for Bakugo's birthday and you nearly set it on fire. Momo said, giggling at the thought. Do you know why that happened? Shoto asked again, this time with a little more emphasis on the why. I... no, I never really thought about why it happened. Everyone was searching for a fire extinguisher and I couldn't... Stop worrying. You almost never use the left side of your body. Momo whispered. She was still worried about what was going on. Maybe his father said something to him that caused Shoto to erupt. She didn't want to get her hopes up. But the position they had themselves in made her daydream as his grip around her waist tightened. Todoroki took one of his hands off her hips and took out the elastic that kept her ponytail intact. Momo's long hair flowed like a waterfall to the floor. It ended just above Shoto's other hand, where he playfully twirled a strand of it. I saw your hair down for the first time when it happened. You looked as beautiful then as you do now. Todoroki murmured. I saw you smile today, and my body just reacted to say the least. You look perfect. You are perfect. And I need you to know that.
Todoroki brought both his hands to cup her face. Yaoyorozu melted into them as her palms found the back of his neck. I have been having trouble sleeping recently. I'd wake up to my ice quirk activating and freezing my bed sheets. At first I thought it was simply developing, but when my fire parts started acting up, I knew it wasn't a coincidence. There's a part of me that's always cold when you're not around. Momo, you are my fire. You are what keeps my heart warm, not my quirk. Tears began falling from Todoroki's eyes as he dropped his head in embarrassment. This was too much for her, he told himself. Yayorozu lifted his chin to meet her lips with his. The kiss was soft and blissful. She held the back of his head and pushed into it to deepen their kiss. When Momo came out of it for air, she watched Todoroki light up, literally. His shirt was starting to turn to ash before he noticed and froze the remains. She began laughing, <laughs> tears streaming from her face. She was so happy that she didn't care about the heat. You're missing three words, Shadow dear. She said through happy sobs. Todoroki pulled her in for another kiss, lifting her off the ground. When he put her back down, Shoto leaned into her ear to hide his sobbing. I love you, Todoroki whispered. His body trembled, and Yaoyorozu could feel the warm streams flow down her shoulder, where he had buried his head. She knew he had probably never knew affection like this. She pulled him in closer, rubbing his back and playing with his hair. I'm not giving up on you. She soothingly declared. I love you so much. They stayed there for a couple of minutes, in nothing but the sound of their own joyful tears, before walking back inside Sato's door. Just to stop Mina's painful screeches, the answer is yes. Me and Yayorazu are officially dating. Happy at Pinky? <laughs> My babies. At Frosty Flames, the screams of the damned never truly end. I still hear them to this day. They're saying, when's the marriage? Quite confusing sometimes. At Eternal Darkness, no, that's Mina planning our future. I love you, Shoto. At Mama Momo, I love you too. They already said they love each other. I'm crying. <laughs> At Red Riot, come collect your devil, Kirby. At Charge at you, hearty har har, very funny. I'll bring Toru with. Congrats, you two! First 1A couple to date! Literally! <laughs> this is amazing! I'm so happy for both of you! Congratulations to you both! May your relationship prosper and only grow stronger with the coming years! I definitely saw this coming, and I'm super glad it worked out! Now at Frosty Flames, we'll stop setting stuff on fire, please and thank you! At Tadpole. Can't promise anything. Well, I do believe you can thank me for making this happen! At Flex Tape, I will thank you for your advice. But Charge Chu? You made this happen. Thank you, Pikachu. At Frosty Flames, you are most certainly welcome. I will say though, Shoto really said absolute panic before it all happened. <laughs> no comment. And my glory is stolen. At Charge 2? Wait, so Sarah wasn't high? At Mama Momo. Was he not? That's news to me. <laughs> I have fucking standards. Glad you two are together. You're almost as sweet as the fully iced cake. Almost, though. <laughs> at Frosty Flames, at Mama Momo. Ugh, stop being sappy and shit on Twitter. I'm gonna puke, damn it. I need a girlfriend. What you need is a wedgie that rips your fucking balls in half. At Earphone Jack. <gasps> Exam review sheets are coming out tomorrow. I expect all of you to start studying soon. Those that fail the exam will not be returning to UA next year. At Pinky, at Flex Tape, at Charge Shoe, at Red Riot. At King Explosion Murder. Don't call me out like that! At King Explosion Murder. 
Please tutor us. Yeah, bro. You're one of the smartest guys in our class. At King Explosion Murder. Please, Cat. Hell no. I'm just reminding you all of your inevitable fucking failure. At King Explosion Murder, you will literally have no friends if we fail. None. Zippo. At Charge Chew. Let's be honest. Kachan doesn't care about people's feelings anyways. Oh, fuck off, shitty nerd. I don't need anyone but myself to be the best. At King Explosion Murder. That's no way to treat your classmates, Bakugo. Helping others will only bring you closer towards success and create stronger bonds with your friends and potential future hero allies. At All Might. I know! So inconsiderate. This is why I'm your favorite, right? First, <laughs> All Might has Twitter! Second, he really just told Bakugo, that's not very plus ultra of you. <laughs> if Bakugo is unwilling to help, me and Ida will be running study sessions in the commons living room. At Mama Momo. Thank you, Mama. Mom and Dad really coming in clutch with the extra help. Well, I know what I'm doing with my weekend. Photo shoot? Jiro didn't want me to post this, but hey, she looks good, so her opinion is invalidated. You bitch! She even changed her profile picture to the photo. Oh, we were going to see it anyway, dear. No need for language. Damn, Jiro looking spicy. I must say, Jiro does look quite nice. Kudos to the photographer. Aww, so pretty! Maybe there is some light in this world. You're still coming to band practice, right, at Earphone Jack? Yeah, I'll be there. We have a new member, eh? At Earphone Jack. Oh, I was not made aware. At Eternal Darkness, Purple Hair Shit plays the bass. Don't let him touch my drum kit, I'll break his fucking hands. This will be a fun experience. Help. Send help. What's up, Kami? Pikachu fucking short-circuited. Ha 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 ha! You're not funny. This is serious. We're listening. Are you okay? Well, when we were baking and stuff, I burnt my hands on accident, and Jiro kind of held them in the water so I didn't use my phone. But she laced her fingers around mine, and then she laughed at my joke and put her head on my shoulder and... Uh, what do I do? Oh! Do you like Kyoka? Uh... That'll be it, totally. How the fuck do you two idiots know Morse code? We don't, cat. <laughs> Focus! Kaminari, how did you react? That's the most important thing to figure out. I mean, I thought she was being playful at first. We've been best friends since we started, and we flirt all the time. Jokingly, of course. But I felt her grip tighten, and I figured if I sank her hands deeper in the ice, it would be too cold for her, and she'd just end up pulling them out. She didn't let go. At all. I just pretended like I didn't notice. I mean, until I had my head a little bit on hers. She uses really nice shampoo, by the way. She likes you, bro! That doesn't help with what I'm supposed to do! If you want smart advice, listen to your master, peasant. I'm listening, Daddy Baki. Uh, I instantly regret this. Don't say you like her unless she says it first. You've already got exams and shit coming up, and the last thing you need is a distraction. That doesn't mean act any fucking different. Keep things the way you are unless she says she likes you. Then tell her you feel the same way. That way you two won't be fucking awkward about it. Remember, this is coming from the man that's never been in a relationship. Dude, you got better advice? It's not like you're an expert either. Sarah's got a point. You did just get a girlfriend. Fuck all of you. That's my advice. Take it or leave the fucking chat. Not like I got anyone better to listen to. Kami. I know. I have to be careful. Trust me. I'm scared as fuck. She's honestly amazing. I just don't want you getting hurt again.
that and having to deal with your ungodly amount of sobbing. Says the guy who was fucking cuddling me the day after it happened. Just be careful. Promise? Promise. <laughs>